All right, on this video, I wanted to demonstrate the versatility of this wheel. Uh, the wheel is bored out for a half an inch, so you can install that over a half inch uh, axle, some sort of a pin. Uh, I've got a stainless steel pin down at the other end of this board, so I'm going to flip this around. But I also wanted to show that it can be used, obviously this is the quarter inch bolt, uh, a standard quarter 20, you can use quarter 28. Uh, and the bearings that I've inserted into this obviously are half inch outside and quarter inch inside. Well, these bearings can be had in many different sizes and these are really cheap bearings. Uh, this one happens to be a 3 8 of an inch ID and this one is a 3 16 of an inch ID. So you can pilot this wheel on a shaft that's 3 16 1 quarter, 3 8 or down at the other end, 1 half inch. And I'm going to demonstrate that right now. I'm going to shut it off. I will leave the pinion there. Basically going to slide the wheel off and remove the ball bearings. The upper and lower bearing are now removed. Those spacers can stay there. So I'm going to flip this board around and like I said at the other end there's a one half of an inch pin. I believe it's like .498 which about any piece of rod that you'd buy at a hardware store is usually uh, about that size. Now I'll insert this onto the shaft. Oh, wait a minute, I'm going to need a spacer. Let's do stainless steel washer and two nylon spacers. I carry these spacers on this kit because there's many different sizes. Okay, now that's too high. I'm going to remove one. There's many different size wheels that I run on this. All the way from four positions all the way up to 18. Okay, that looks a little bit better. Uh, so once the wheel is installed, close the gap and then open it just a hair. It's going to be a little bit of free play. You can tighten that up a little bit. The goal is to just make sure that it's not rubbing, creating friction here. Uh, the only parts that rub should be this machine quality bearing. Uh, in and out of the slot, which is almost completely friction free. Now I'll go ahead and put power to it. So it's the same Geneva wheel, it's just operating on a half inch spindle. Now if you were going to do this without the ball bearing, rotating at a very slow speed like this, uh, unless you're going to put an enormous load on it, um, I would probably take a small drop of machine oil and put down there on that shaft, uh, but it, even at speeds like this, I mean, you're not going to burn that up. Listen how quiet it is. Let me check the gap. That's pretty good. Here's a quick side view. Now you can see the hole in the back of the cam here that's tapped uh, 832 for the set screw. Now you can see the ball bearing entering the slot. Very, very nice mechanism. Classic mechanism. You don't see these anymore. Uh, they've basically been replaced by the stepper motor and electronically controlled and computer controlled gear motors. But this is the Geneva cam and Geneva wheel. This is a six position, 60 degree on the output. Let's go the other direction. And I'll reverse it one more time. Gotta watch that micro switch arm.
I need to put a little more of a bend in that and then it will operate in both directions. Oh, before I run out of time on the video, uh, just about every hardware store will carry shafting for these components. Whether you want to crank it by hand or whether you want to have a gear motor do it, you can buy bushings and adapters. These little brass pieces, I buy these at a hobby shop. Uh, Ace Hardware, where I live, uh, also carries these in brass and copper. So you can adapt a shaft up or down, whatever you need to do. Uh, here, are, here are some nylon bushings that are available at that same Ace Hardware store. Different types of nylon washers and spacers and shims. Uh, also, I wanted to show you one of these that I polished, and it wasn't difficult to do. This one, it's got some fingerprints on it. This was polished in about 10 minutes on both sides with nothing more than a cordless drill and this little setup that I bought at Home Depot. I bought a 12 inch long threaded rod and then pinched that in the vise and cut it with a hacksaw and then thread it on a nylon stop nut and then all you've got to do is put on a large washer then put your your buffing wheel on there a second washer you're basically making a buffing wheel sandwich then you tighten this other nylon stop nut on there put that in a vise and jam those two nuts together with a couple of three-quarter inch wrenches and this is a half inch I don't know how large I think most drills open at least a three-eighths they had wheels like this that were a little smaller that would accept a three-eighths of an inch arbor they sell arbors or you can make your own I wanted one that was a little longer uh, and these threads grip really well in the chuck of the drill so you spin this this was bolted to a piece of scrap lumber um, the uh, the rouge, this is just a jeweler's rouge, some sort of a metal polish. They sell this at most hardware stores. This was like $2.50. And this is what it looks like. It just essentially looks like a large crayon, but embedded into that is your abrasive material. And you'll spin the wheel and then hold this into the wheel and load the wheel with the rouge. And then this will be screwed down to a, a scrap board. And then... Uh, basically just make contact with the wheel and polish it up and you get in here to do the edges um, and it makes kind of a mess I do it out in the backyard uh, and then this piece just needs to be cleaned with hot soap and water to get some of that residue off and then you just wipe it clean with a towel and you get this high luster polish and this is the same aluminum that this one was made from these are uh, I'm not sure the exact alloy it may be 6061 but it's a really high grade uh, probably aircraft grade aluminum so the parts are made of quality materials and stainless steel fasteners but again this Geneva wheel combo this pinion and wheel uh, is currently for sale on eBay and again thank you for watching